spiritual experiences come in many different ways what ties such occurrences together is their potential to help you explore your inner self leading to personal insight growth and fulfillment we're going to talk about the magic of spiritual experiences in today's podcast stay tuned i'll be right back welcome to spiritually speaking podcast My goal is to teach you the elements of spirituality that will show you how to find your passion and purpose in life. I'm your host, Lisa Maria, so join me in another session of Spiritually Speaking. Welcome back to Spiritually Speaking Podcast. This is Lisa Maria, your host, and today we're talking about strange and wonderful spiritual experiences but the thing is that these spiritual experiences can offer unique opportunities for self-discovery and personal growth a well-known type of spiritual experience is a vision where you see hear and feel a being or a scene like a movie in your mind Visions are all-encompassing and can make you lose awareness of your actual surroundings. A visitation is similar, but involves the appearance of a spiritual being, such as an angel, within the context of the real world. Visions and visitations are influenced by cultural background. For example, many Roman Catholics have had visions of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Somebody that's into Buddhism would experience a vision of Buddha. A spiritual experience can also take the form of sensations or emotions induced by a person, a place, or a thing. Priests and other people noted for their wisdom and compassion often have the power to spark spiritual sensations in others. Some people are sometimes acclaimed as gurus, But anyone from a teacher to a grandparent can invoke these experiences. A place that triggers a spiritual experience may be inhabited by its own spirit, known in Latin as the locus genia. These may be found in an old family home, a tranquil forest clearing, or a temple or shrine. When you encounter a locus genia, you may experience feelings of acceptance and understanding. But then again, there's also negative spirits that inhabit certain places that you don't want to connect with at all because they may not realize that they're dead or they may not have gone to the light when they were offered it after crossing over so a lot of times a spirit will stay earthbound and these earthbound spirits sometimes become angry because they are continually trying to connect or talk to people and nobody's answering them because they can't see them because they don't realize that they're gone These are the type of spirits that you do not want to connect with. And we'll get more into that in a later podcast. Most spiritual experiences come upon you without even realizing that you're having them or going to have them. And at the time that you least expect them. However, there are certain ways you can induce or enhance a spiritual experience too. A traditional method as used by shamans, witch doctors, and medicine men, is to subject the mind, body, and spirit to an extreme state. This could include chanting, fasting, taking herbs, exposing the body to heat or cold, and so on. The aim is to induce an altered state of consciousness. For example, like putting yourself into a trance using meditation and hypnosis, Or even in dreams, you can explore and have spiritual experiences. With meditation, any type of meditation has the ability to bring on a spiritual experience. 
techniques such as visualization can help, as can meditating in a specific location or with a particular person. There are a lot of meditations out there that are specifically to enhance your spiritual experiences, such as meeting crossed over loved ones or meeting your angels or enhancing your psychic abilities. What happens is the meditation instructor or the hypnotist will put certain words or suggestions into the script of the guided meditation, which help induce a spiritual experience or a trance. Dreams are another way to have a spiritual experience. Visions and visitations are more likely to come to you in your dreams than at any other time. Get into the habit of keeping a dream diary or a dream journal in which you must write as soon as you wake up and practice visualization techniques to enhance your dream recall. Now, the reason that spirit can come through to us in dreams more often than while we are in a waking state is because our ego sleeps while we sleep. So we no longer have that block or barrier in front of us. So if you're trying to reach a crossed over loved one or your angels or guides, ask them to come into your dreams. And then have your paper and pen ready when you wake up so you can write down exactly what you experienced as soon as you wake up because usually you'll start to forget what it was as the day goes on. I want to remind you that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis, okay? It's just like when you're driving a car, for example, and you don't even realize how you got to one place or you got home because your mind is so used to doing it that you pretty much go into a trance. It's a trance-like state, okay? So a hypnotist or meditation, you cannot be told to bark like a dog or cluck like a chicken, in other words. So I don't want you to worry that if you use a hypnosis script or a meditation script that the suggestions in there are going to make you do anything that you do not want to do because you are in control always when in meditative state or a hypnotic state, okay? So let's move on to understanding out-of-body experiences. An out-of-body experience, or OBE, is the name given to a surprisingly common phenomena that may prove the existence of the soul. In a typical OBE, a person feels that their consciousness has left their body and they are floating above, looking down on their physical form. During an OBE, they may pass through walls and cover large distances, visiting places and people, and discovering information. This usually lasts less than a minute, but has been reported to last hours too. Many psychics claim to use OBEs to exercise remote viewing, which is psychically traveling to other places and seeing what's going on using their mind's eye. Astral travelers can roam over vast distances without their physical bodies even moving. Surveys suggest that as many as 10% of the population have had an OBE at some time in their lives. If you can recall any of the following, then you may be one of that 10%. A floating, weightless, or ascending sensation. You felt that you were rising up through your skull. An awareness of your body as being distant or below you. An ability to view yourself or a scene from an unusual or impossible angle. For example, looking down on yourself from the corner or the ceiling. An ability to move through walls, ceilings, or windows, or any other solid object 
and travel to other locations without physically moving. Now, an out-of-body experience is different than a near-death experience. Out-of-body experiences are often reported as part of a near-death experience, or an NDE. These are different phenomena, but there are links between the two. An NDE occurs when someone's heart has stopped, or they are otherwise close to clinical death, but are subsequently revived and report having been conscious of a strange sequence of events. These events may include an OBE, with the person looking down on their body from above, often as medics try to revive them. This is followed by an awareness of a tunnel with a light at the end. Sometimes a glowing or silvery cord appears to connect to the person's consciousness and goes to their body. Some NDE reports include details of events or objects that the person who was close to death should have not been able to see from where they lay. Such factors lend weight to the truth of their claims to have had an OBE, although they have proved virtually impossible to verify. Many scientists and skeptics argue that OBEs and NDEs take place entirely in the mind and are simply strange forms of hallucination. OBEs often happen to people who are lying down and could be a form of hypnagogic hallucination, a type of hallucination that occurs when people are passing between wakefulness and sleep. NDEs can also happen to people whose brains are starved of oxygen, and skeptics point out that drugs such as ketamine can induce experiences very similar to OBEs. People who claim to be able to have voluntary OBEs often use relaxation and imagery techniques that are similar to self-hypnosis. Perhaps they are simply giving themselves hallucinations. What do you think? Just a note on the hypnagogic hallucination or the hypnagogic state. This is something that Dolores Cannon has used and discovered to find out the most about past lives and where people or the soul has lived many, many times in the past. So if you're interested in learning more about the hypnagogic state, I suggest that you look up some Dolores Cannon videos on YouTube. She is such an interesting and wise person. I would suggest any video that attracts you. Most importantly, to some people, however, OBEs prove that humans have souls that are separate from the body. How else could a person be conscious and aware of places and events that are distant or hidden from the physical body? So how can you induce an out-of-body experience? Voluntary out-of-body experiences are difficult to induce, but here are some techniques that may help you achieve this experience. One, use a deep relaxation technique, such as meditation or self-hypnosis. Or listen to a guided meditation that you can find on YouTube. There's beginner's meditations for inducing an out-of-body experience. Practice the technique of summoning up internal images until you can produce a vivid mental picture of what it would be like to experience an OBE. The human mind is most psychically receptive and open to this sort of experience when you are in a state halfway between sleep and wakefulness. The best time to practice deep relaxation and forming mental imagery is when you're dropping off to sleep or just waking up in the morning. So what does this all mean? The true challenge of a spiritual experience is to discover its meaning and significance. Often such implications may be hidden only to become apparent later on, but you have to work them out for yourself. Almost everyone who has a spiritual experience 
reports that they feel profoundly changed. So if you are lucky to have one, you should view it as an opportunity to self-discovery. And I'd like to add a few little notes to the end here just to clarify some things that I've spoken about. I do not recommend using any type of drugs to enhance a spiritual experience. Ketamine is something that is used for medical reasons by licensed anesthesiologists. So please do not use any drugs to enhance a spiritual experience or an out-of-body experience. What I do suggest is this. Practice practice, practice. Just like a baseball player or football player has to train, so do psychics and mediums. We have to exercise the brain, which is also a muscle. So the best way to do it is to continue to practice meditating. Note and journal your experiences Because once you start to journal about your experiences, you will see a story beginning to form. I promise you this because I have done it and I know this is how it works. And you will begin to heal and move on into a spiritual transformation period. Again, Don't forget to check out my website where there's all kinds of free PDF downloads, free guided meditations, and so much more on personal development and spiritual development at www.spiritualonlinecourses.org forward slash free dash resources. Everything will be in the show notes. I might even link to some great Dolores Cannon videos to help you understand the hypnagogic state. And I, again, hope you enjoyed this podcast as much as I love bringing it to you. In the next podcast, we're going to start exploring what the human soul is and really understand more about near-death experiences. This is Lisa Maria. I will talk to you in the next podcast. Namaste. Are you looking for guidance in your life? Are you trying to figure out what your next step is? Book a psychic reading with psychic medium and spiritual teacher Lisa Moria, who offers personal readings along with discounted home parties and events. Readings are available online or in person. For more information, visit www.lisamaria.com. That's www.lisamaria.com. Or you can contact Lisa directly at readingrequest at lifeyou.me. That is readingrequest at lifeyou.me. Start changing your life today.